A lot has happened since we started talking about quadratics. In fact, we've actually been talking about quadratics when we were in our unit called polynomial arithmetic. You just didn't know it yet. We have graphed quadratics. We've talked about quadratic properties with the vertex and axis of symmetry. We've done transformations of the quadratic parent function. And now we are going to start a bunch of different methods for solving quadratics. Today we're going over method one for solving quadratics which is to solve them by factoring. So we're bringing back in the idea of polynomial arithmetic. Because remember, when we're factoring, we're trying to get something in ABC form written in factored form. Now, we're still going to be doing that. And the reason we spent so long on factoring is because it is one of the processes we use to solve quadratics. Just like we solved regular equations, just like we solved systems, we now solve quadratics. A lot of things in math use this word solving, but this is the method for solving a quadratic equation that we're practicing today. So a couple things first. It says, what are the solutions to 4x squared plus 4x minus 3 equal to 0? Now before, when we were just factoring, we just had expressions, which meant there wasn't an equals and a 0. But this is going to become super duper important. If your equation does not say equal 0, you're going to have to have it equal 0. So we'll see some examples in class today or next time whenever it does not equal 0. But when it does, because getting it to equal 0 is pretty simple, all you have to remember is what we did back in the fourth six weeks with factoring, where we find A, B, and C. We factor by setting up and solving our own X puzzle. If you remember, A times C goes in the top of the X puzzle, so for this one, 4 times negative 3 is going to be negative 12. And B goes in the bottom, so 4 goes down here. The number that goes underneath the fraction bar in the sides is A, so we're going to put a 4 here. Okay, Those are A's. All we have to do is figure out what factors of 12 so I'm going to make a t-chart for 12, would add to 4. We do this in a very organized manner from least to greatest, so we have all of the numbers that multiply to 12. If you think about the magic number sheet, if the top number in the x-puzzle is positive, sorry, that's negative. If the top number in the x-puzzle is negative and the bottom number is positive, that means the signs will be opposite and my bigger number is going to be positive. So I go ahead and make that part of my t-chart. Which of these rows would give me 4 if I added them together? Yeah, exactly. Negative 2 and a positive 6 would give me 4 when I add them together, so those two things become part of my x-puzzle. I reduce out the sides. Negative 2 divided by 4 is negative 1 half, and 6 divided by 4 is 3 halves. Yes, sometimes those don't reduce. Yes, sometimes only one side reduces. I'm glad you remembered that. Now, one of the steps that we did when we were uh, factoring is we took these numbers from the X puzzle and we put them into factored form. Now, hopefully you remember that when we were factoring, we took these denominators and we swung them forward. But the reason that we had you guys write this step down when we were factoring is because we've actually already identified the solutions. The solutions for this quadratic are the opposite terms than you have written in the parentheses. So the opposite of negative one half is positive one half. And the opposite of positive three halves is negative three halves. And those are my solutions. So I don't have to swing the denominator forward. That's for factoring. For solving, once you get to this point, you just take the opposite number than what's in here and know that those are your solutions to this quadratic. Now, since we know what the solutions are, hopefully your spidey senses are tingling, you'll also realize that if we know the solutions, we know all of the vocabulary words called the rocks, which means the roots are 1 half and negative 3 halves. And the zeros are 1 half and negative 3 halves. And if we graphed this, the x-intercepts would be 1 half and negative 3 halves. 
the solutions is the S part of the rocks words. So just like we emphasize the x-intercept for graphing and finding the rocks words, when we're solving, we're emphasizing the solutions, but knowing that the roots, the zeros, and the x-intercepts are still the same vocabulary word because these are a part of the rocks terms. Now, if I didn't ask you to solve, but instead asked you to factor, we would swing those denominators forward. So I'm taking x minus 1 half and swinging the 1 half forward to be 2x minus 1. And taking the 3 halves and swinging the 2 forward to have 2x plus 3. So don't forget that if we were factoring, this is factored form. And that's totally cool if that's what I'm asking for. But this lesson and what we're going to be focusing on for the next couple classes is solving quadratics finding the solutions. That's it, folks. You already know how to factor. If you're stuck on the factoring part, so everything in the X puzzle, there is a few lessons on factoring that is on my YouTube channel or in your Ed Puzzle assignments. So if you want to just go back there and get more tutoring on this section, that might be very helpful because we are going to need to remember how to do this from the four six weeks to find our solutions. See y'all in class.